All right, so here we go. Next equation I, I like to write is going to be a y equals ln of x minus 2. So I'd like to go and show you how to graph this. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply some transformations. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is you know, first determine exactly what our transformation is. And since we're subtracting the two inside of our function, uh, we're going to shift the graph two units to the right. All right. Now, so we're going to shift the two units to the right. And what we'd like to do is maybe kind of determine exactly what does the logarithmic graph look like without or natural logarithmic graph look like without any transformation. Now remember, when we're dealing with log, um, natural logarithms, we have a base e. All right. So if I was going to take a look at this, you know, I can just kind of plot some points and kind of see um, what exactly I'm going to have here. And you know, you can transfer these over into exponential form, but usually with logarithmic graphs, um, it's not going to be necessary. We know that the graph is going to cross at 1 comma 0 unless it's being multiplied by a multiplier. And it's going to look something like this. All right? And we can go and test that by putting in 1 in for x and then determining the value. And then usually what I like to do is just pick you know, another point, 2 or 3 or something, just to kind of see where the graph is going. So since I don't have any other, uh, um, since I don't have any dilations, nothing's being multiplied by my ln of x, what I'm going to do is and just take ln of x and just create a table with it. So let's do ln when x equals 1. Well, therefore, my y is going to equal 0, hence how I already knew that 1 comma 0 was my point. Now let's go and do just like ln maybe of 5. Now this is going to be an irrational number. All right, so I'm just going to approximate it to the 10th, so 1.61. So over at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm going to be up at 5, comma, 1.61. All right? And again, that's an approximation because um, it's going to be irrational and that not that exact point. However, what I notice is I'm going to be shifting my graph two units to the right. So that's not going to affect my y values, but it is going to affect my x values. So now, instead of the graph crossing at 1, 0, it's now going to cross at 1, 2, 3, 0. And instead of the graph um, having another point at 5, 1.61, it's now going to have a point at 7, 1 1.61. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 1.61, which would be over there. So I like to plot these points, so just write them out there, 3, 0, and then 7, 1.61. And the next thing that's also important is when we look at our general graph, we need to determine, again, what the asymptote is, domain, and range. So the asymptote of my parent graph of a natural logarithm is x equals 0, and where the domain is from 0 to infinity, and the range is from negative infinity to infinity, right? Because you can see the domain is the set of all x values that are going to make this equation true. We don't have any x, we don't have this graph crossing over 0 into the negative values, so my domain is only contained from values that are going to be positive. However, the range, this graph decreases and also increases to infinity and negative infinity, so therefore the range is going to be all real numbers. Well, now I've shifted the graph two units to the right. So now my asymptote has now changed to 2. And remember, the asymptote is where your graph is going to approach. So my graph is going to be approaching 2, but it's not going to cross it or touch it. So therefore, a graph's going to look something like this. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you graph natural logarithmic equation with transformation. Thanks. Oh, hello. Coming in to.